stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state, under God, indivisible. All right, so next is Minister, the statement of officer and oath to the incoming election and re-elected officials, Mark and Christy Lyons. Mark, will you join us? Okay. Christy? Yes. You want to stand up or do you want me out here? No, I'm going to tell you first. Oh, thank you. We're keeping track. That was for last term, right? <laughs> so we know. All right, next is a item is a proclamation proclaiming June 4th, 2019 as Kelly Boltinghouse Day for election of 2018-29 Intermediate Teacher of the Year and finalist for Clear Creek ISD Secondary Teacher of the Year. You can join me. All right, so Kelly has a Bachelor of Arts, just a little background on her, in sociology from Texas A&M, whoop, and uh, also <laughs> is going to school at Lamar for uh, educational technology and leadership degree. Um, currently teaches sixth grade science at League City Intermediate. She started as a teacher 11 years ago as a first grade teacher. Mm. Got out of that. <laughs> her love is for writing and quickly took her up to the fourth grade level. Not her writing, but teaching fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> this is where uh, her passion in teaching gifted and talented students began. She uh, soon became the gifted and talented uh, specialist with the Clear Creek ISD, grades kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, she then, opportunity opened up and went into the gifted and talented magnetic program for the intermediate. And this is where she's a fifth year teaching science at the magnet school. She's currently the department chair for the science department at League City. 
serves as a mentor for first year teachers and is a member of the campus leadership team. Uh, their main focus is creating positive learning environment for all the students, enhancing communication and giving students opportuni opportunities to participate in lessons that are engaging and relevant. And outside of that, Bolting House enjoys spending time with their two sons, Harrison and Elliot, and then uh, seeing the world through their eyes, and oh yeah, and her husband, Johnny. All right, next is uh, item four, public hearing. Notice of violation for property located at 815 Grove Road, Clear Lake Shores, Texas. For violation of city municipal code section 78-167, junk vehicle as public nuisance and city municipal code section 78-169, abatement of nuisance, removal from public or private property disposal. Open the floor for public meeting at this time. Oh, and Kevin, if you want to explain anything to that, it would be greatly appreciated. Be Thank good. you. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> uh, I wanted to let the city council and the mayor know and the citizens that the property at 815 Grove has complied. He did register his vehicle. He did clean up everything. And I made sure that he secured the, the home today. So he is in compliance currently. Good. So any public comments? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> One public comment from. <laughs> All right, that closes item number four. And then reports from council, Councilwoman Jan Bailey. I don't have anything, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman Amanda Fenwick. Um, I have a couple things tonight, Mayor. So first of all, council members, you should have received an email from me yesterday with our updated legislative bill tracker now that um, the session is over and um, I appreciate Kevin finding that one that well, I'm sure there's more than one but the one that's on our in our packet tonight um, regarding building permits but um, overall we we did okay um, in the session not great um, but we did okay so um, session is over um, 
I will have passed out to you guys just kind of a high level analytics of our Facebook activity. Um, it gives you, this is for the past month, so this is on the city's Facebook page, um, gives you page views, um, page previews, people who have liked us, reach, um, our reach, um, and on the back side, um, our most um, our highest reach and engagement post was the first one that we put out about um, the barge spill, but um, Facebook can get pretty granular, so if you have any specific questions. Um, but I just thought, just to kind of give you an idea of the activity that we're seeing on, on our social media, on our Facebook page, um, that I can provide monthly. So if you have that, if you need any other information, let me know and I can pull those analytics. Um, reminder that Jan July 10th is the next Galveston County Mayors and Council Association meeting. Mark, I've added you to the distribution list, so you should get that um, information when it comes out. Uh, location is still TBD, but um, Pat is looking at July 10th for that date. And then lastly, a uh, reminder that um, our annual Independence Day celebration this year is going to be on June 29th. Um, Councilwoman Lyons and I are um, co-host or co-planning that event, co-chairing that event. We're looking for volunteers. Um, if you have some time on June 29th and want to volunteer to help cook hot dogs, to help serve food, to help manage um, some of the activities and games that we have set up and tear down, please reach out to one of us. We're also looking for donations of bottled water and soda. Um, but and what? Watermelons. And watermelons. Oh yes, because there's a watermelon eating contest. Um, so basically the lineup, um, if you're on Facebook, is on the Facebook page. Um, I believe it was in the Islander as well. Starts with the golf cart parade. Um, again, we'll have hot dogs, we'll have a watermelon eating contest, a tug of war. We'll have a bounce house, a dry and wet bounce house um, for the kiddos. And I just received confirmation that our um, police association is going to sponsor one of those bounce houses. So thank you to them. Um, cornhole contest. Hula hoop contest. Hula hoop contest. So it'll be it'll be um, a, a couple hours of, of fun. Um, we're gonna, hoping to have a live band out there that day as well. Um, so just cross your fingers for no rain, and um, see Christy or I if you want to volunteer or have a donation. And I conclude my report. Thank you, Councilwoman Fenwick. All right, Councilwoman Miss Lyons. Um, again, all the donations or volunteer help that we can get for our celebration that would be great. Um, we had a board meeting for Quincy, and we're still not at a even take on budget, so we'll have a budget meeting on June 12th. Where is that meeting going to be? To be determined. Okay. Can you let us know? Yeah. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councilman Lyons. And Councilwoman Terrell? The drag race happened, for better or for worse, it happened. But we gained in, in excess of $2,000 for the scholarship fund. Thank you to Mike Pons, who just picked it up the week before to make it happen, and to uh, Sam and Rick Fisher, who provided the funky sound for the ladies. <laughs> and we had a bunch of uh, Islanders participate, but over $2,000, and that was the, the takeaway. I'd also like to thank um, Teresa Otten for the Islander. I've been noticing in the past couple of months um, especially, the, the trend towards more, better, overall complete communication between CLS Connect, between the city uh, website, between Amanda and the Facebook page, the excerpts from Kurt and from Brent, and the Islander connecting all of that together to try to hit communication on all fronts so that everybody can be reached, the folks that aren't on Facebook, that aren't on the internet, um, so I just, uh, kudos to, to you for that and to continue our, our push toward better communication. Excellent job. That's it. Thank you, Councilwoman Terrell and Councilman Thompson. I have nothing to report. Nothing to report. How you feeling, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> All right, I got a few notes. Um, just a couple things on Drawer Road. We're still waiting on the county to finalize the drawer road so CLS can acquire the ROW and hopefully uh, work out some zoning for over there. Um, Highway 146, uh, one side of the boat traffic passageways to be coming up to be closed so they can remove the rest of the retaining wall up on the bridge. Um, I'm working with uh, Terry, the mayor from Kima, Gale, to uh, meet with TxDOT and discuss the alternative golf cart access. Um, the two, well, the the one city, uh, Kima chief of police has been looking at some things and options of, of going down 518 and crossing there and 2094. 
Um, I myself don't advise that, um, and, the, and 146 and TxDOT hasn't bought off on that. If you cross underneath, you're, it's just a big risky job there. They're not, I don't think they believe they're giving tickets, but they will pull you over and give you a pretty good um, discussion. Um, also, on the refurbishing of lights, you've seen those going up. We just got uh, six more back. Six more just got dropped off to get powder coated, so we're doing that. Um, and then uh, I'm putting out a uh, notice. Uh, hopefully once a month we'll have a meeting, like on a Saturday, um, to discuss uh, issues um, or concerns or positive things going on with the city. Um, and again, also, I'm writing uh, into the Islander with a monthly newsletter along with Brent, and then the chief will be doing some of that also soon um, with our uh, metrics. And uh, maybe we'll call it like um, mimosas with the mayor or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody show up, right? All right. I'll strike that from the <laughs> Um we're also looking into the recordings of the meeting. I had a really good uh, discussion with Danny from Lighthouse, and uh, I understand the surveillance system now, and I'm working with Brent. Um, we can download a lower resolution, and then I just need to figure out the YouTube side of that, and that's somewhat new and somewhat drinking out of uh, several fire hoses right now, so please please bear with me. Oh, that'd be great. So I've actually got the file, so and then we can do that. Um, also, our condolences go out to Angie and her family yeah. for the loss of her mother. Thank you. Yeah. So. Thank you. Um, and don't forget to come out for hurricane preparedness meeting Wednesday night at 6:30. Uh, fire trucks, police, and ambulance will be here, uh, weather permitting, and uh, along with the lots of details on how to be prepared for the hurricane season. So you've been communicated to. <laughs> All right, going on to item number six, staff report, City Administrator Brent Spear. Uh, lots going on this. Uh, we have a very active month. Uh, the pool season has started, and I remind uh, everyone, if you're a member of the pool, please uh, follow the rules that you uh, agreed to when you signed up. The uh, pool management company is working to get a full-time placement of the lifeguards on scene or on site. And I'll be working with them as I develop a resource guide. I've got uh, it's about 90% complete, but I want to give them some scenario, uh, like a checklist in case they encounter a medical emergency, for instance. Um, I don't expect 17-year-old kids to maybe remember simple, easy tasks and under crisis. So, trying to make a good resource manual for them and also explain uh, what people agreed to when they got their membership. Uh, an unexpected expense is likely coming is we have a pool pump that's uh, running inefficiently. Um, they were uh, instructed yesterday to go ahead and troubleshoot that. It's kicking out a breaker, and that breaker is also connected to our gate system at the pool. So we had a problem this past weekend with the gate. Uh, it wasn't working properly at the maglock gate. Uh, ran the battery completely down, and once you run those batteries down, you can't get them back. They're just like a power... Uh, power supply backup battery. So once they're gone, they're gone. So a uh, new battery's been purchased that's been installed, and uh, we're keeping an eye on that breaker to make sure that that uh, doesn't remain a problem. Uh, the pool committee does uh, would like approval to place a couple of, uh, or say pools and parks, I guess, approval to place some uh, small little library boxes, uh, one at the pool and uh, one at uh, Deep Hole. And uh, I think that's interesting. Uh, they do have uh, benefactors that are willing to purchase those. Uh, I think that the city council should weigh in on having just another item in their parks and whether or not they want to do that. Uh, I don't see any problem with it. It's going to be staffed with volunteer uh, books, and uh, I think they, they are going to be able to cover the costs of that. We will install them and, of course, uh, kind of police them to make sure that they're uh, closed up and so forth. And there are other small libraries located around the island that people are currently using, <laughs> moving books around. So uh, that would be uh, something to consider. Uh, a reminder, tomorrow night, 6.30, we have a hurricane awareness meeting uh, right here at the clubhouse. I do have a small 
computer up here that uh, I'm going to place over there eventually. But if you'd like to sign up tonight for CS or CLS Connect, you can do that while you're here. And uh, basically what that does is it just lines you up for either text messages, emails. So if there is an immediate uh, push out of information, uh, it will buzz in your pocket or on your dresser or something and you can push that out to you as a big push to everyone at the same time. So if you're not on that, and, and probably most people in this room are already on it because they're involved in the local community, let your neighbors know, somebody that uh, doesn't come up to these meetings, that they that's an excellent resource for them. And if you find it beneficial, please uh, spread the word to, the, to others. Um, the, uh, uh, we're going to talk about some bids later, but I uh, did get uh, four bids for debris removal. Um, if you remember in previous reports, we put that out for an RF, RFP, a request for proposal. Didn't receive any. Um, it's difficult because uh, even companies don't read newspapers anymore. So uh, contacted Gallatin County and, and uh, applied some of their strategies, and we got four, four responses. We will talk about that later. But uh, some of the things that I weighed with the, uh, with the process of looking through that and eventually making a recommendation is Basically, our building standards, and we're pretty pretty far up the food chain as far as uh, having good building standards in the city. Um, also, uh, the number of uh, newly constructed buildings to older buildings, and then the amount of veg unprotected vegetation that we have, large trees and things like that. So that's all stuff to consider. If you have 40 acres of woods, and uh, you know. It, that's a that's a different scenario than uh, fully developed, or, uh, you know, residential area like we have here. So those are things that I took in consideration. In the future, just to avoid maybe the RFP, we uh, I would suggest we probably use the HGAC approved contractor list, and we can make necessary adjustments unique to our community with with uh, a contractor or a vendor at that time. Uh, Public Works continues working on. Uh, the lamp posts, um, as you see, they keep getting switched out. And, uh, they go from blue to, to black. And uh, we're also trying to take care of trash as it uh, floats in and comes in at high tide. That seems to be, uh, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I just don't like seeing trash in the corner over here. So um, we get out there and rake it up. And they're picking it up at other places as well. Uh, this week I'm also training with uh, community planning and hazards. So that's a full day today, uh, tabletop tomorrow, and, and then they give me their approval. So uh, we, I will continue on that. Ron, Ron Cox Consulting was approved last time, or uh, was the last time or two meetings ago for a letter of engagement regarding a strategic plan. And I'm happy to report that uh, as of tonight we have all members of City Council, including the mayor, and all members of the EDC scheduled for individual interviews with him, and uh, then we will come together as a group and uh, and try to move forward. And he finds that that's uh, probably the best way of doing things because he can speak individually with people. And as is the case right now, I'm speaking; everybody else is listening. You get a, get a large community together. You kind of have one person that does a lot of talking, and you have people that sit back and rather listen. So. Uh, engaging uh, community leaders one-on-one -on -one in, a, in a you know private environment gives them opportunity to weigh in on issues and, and give him a, some honest feedback. So we're really looking forward to that. That will be taking place over the next two months. And uh, I think the rest I will leave for the additional agenda items. Are there any questions? Brian, I have two questions. So do we need to put those library boxes, how do we make the library boxes happen? Do we need to put those on the council's agenda t to approve, or what do you need? We can do, yeah, if we can do that. There was some, my intent was to have them on the agenda this time, but uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I didn't realize we were going to lose a pump. So that's an unex unexpected expense. And in waiting for that, then I also had, uh, you came forth and you have some benefactors that would like to assist and, and make that happen. So. Um, I was hopeful that maybe we could pay for it with city funds, but uh, we can get that on the agenda okay. for the next meeting. And thank you. You're and then welcome. my second question, ha have we had any pool members um, lose their privileges as a result of altercations with lifeguards at this point? None 
currently. However, we did have a documented uh, incident with a, a pool member that took place uh, it, over this past weekend. Um, I have a written report from the police officer on it. But, um, they were going to go ahead and cite them for that, and then I was going to let that filter out. I uh, will follow up with a letter from the city. Really, the the court the court action is one thing, but really the city is the is the policing the policer of that membership. So uh, that would that would land that would probably land on my shoulders, and they would probably have appeal rights to the council if if if, if they were so inclined. And I would you know I would think that would be reasonable. So it's but a citation, I and then is it is it zero tolerance, or, or I guess if we have you haven't decided, or what? How are we handling that? Because like I you said, 16, 17 year old lifeguards dealing with that is just right. not okay. And this w this did not involve a lifeguard first okay. of all, so uh, it, it was specific to the police the police officer. Okay. So or one police officer, and they were doing their job, and and uh, I'm, you know I don't want to speculate on all the other influences, but you know is island life and it was late at night and understand so you know, you make speculation but uh, so in a situation not like that that falls on your shoulders to decide if yeah if they we, lose had a, their we have a problematic person over there um, I know some a kid that's raising heck and he's running around he's pushing other kids in the pool and he's been okay. told not to do it then okay. that's something yes I would deal with we have a parent that or a guardian that is not doing what they are what they signed up and said they were going to do on that on that pool agreement, and yes, that would fall on my. If we have people that show up and they're being loud, boisterous, intoxicated in some way, and they're not listening to, you know, an authority figure to leave the pool, then it would be my job to follow up. It okay. is my job to follow up. Okay. So I will handle that administratively. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank welcome. you, Mr. Page. Thank you. All right, next, uh, Police Department Chief Cook. Last month, I attended the Texas FBI Command College course during the week of May 20th through 24th, located at Prairie View A&M University. This was an overall outstanding training course. Excellent instructors, great subject material, and a wonderful networking opportunity for connecting with officers from many other agencies. Thanks again for allowing me to attend, Brent. Superion thinks they finally figured out all the printing issue problems we've had with our ticket riders. Our printer was returned and then later reinstalled into its patrol vehicle just this past Friday. Free Coast, they're our IT service, is scheduled to work with Sergeant Baylor tomorrow afternoon to test the printer settings and if all goes well, they'll schedule to come out to the PD and update all the other MCPs. I will advise you all this next council meeting Stats for the month of May 2019. Police Department made 569 traffic contacts, two DWI driving while intoxicated arrests, 17 narcotic related arrests, one burglary of a motor vehicle, eight thefts, one unlawful carrying of a weapon, totaling arrests 38. Made 16 bar checks, 126 residential checks while on vacation watch. 2,737. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief Cook. Building official Kevin Harrell. Well, Mayor and Council, um, apologies for not making the last council meeting. I was in training, but it was beneficial to me and beneficial to the city of Quebec Shores. Um, since our last council meeting, I've issued 15 permits. They've all been minor permits. I've not issued any new construction permits because of House Bill 852. 852 was supposed to, if it got a, a good vote, it was supposed to be uh, enacted September 1st of this year, but it got a majority vote of more than two-thirds, so it became effective immediately as of May 21st, 2019. We will be discussing that later in the meeting. Code enforcement cases, I have four current right now. Uh, as for 311 Narcissus, uh, property is secured. Um, there was a little bit of a fiasco. When our previous attorney, Leah, had did her research for the interested parties and owner, 
we sent out that letter. And of course, uh, there was no response from the letter, and council voted to give them 90 days. That 90 days passed. I took it upon myself to do an official title search and found more interested parties. Those interested parties must be given that 90 days ordered by city council. That letter went out April 29th. After the 90th day, which will be July 29th, um, we are set to have a meeting on the 30th. Uh, I will be uh, talking about that at this time. That will give us, if you wish to continue with your order that you voted on, to demolish the building, that is entirely up to you. And that's all I have for this evening. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. All right, and Fire Chief Brent Hahn's out working some incident command stuff. Uh, number seven, public comments at this time. Thank you, Linda. All right, any other com comments? Yes. Uh, my name is Charles Dillon. I live at 218 on Citrus Road. And after reading through this, it was three comments for me. I noted that um, we have a new member of the Roads and Drainage Commission. Uh, I would like to bring it to your attention that last year, there were a plethora of issues with roads and drainage here on the island, and we're still suffering from those. I've had a number of conversations with fellow islanders that are upset and frustrated over the way the drainage work is done and the overall poor contact, uh, poor Thank you, Chuck. Maybe we'll look at our city engineer. Yes, we'll have our city administrator work with everybody that's included with that, including the police chief and stuff with proper signage and everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Paul?
Thank you, Paul. We should be able to get that on the next agenda. And you're also looking for volunteers sometimes to help out, or? And with the two, um, I have some questions for you. <laughs> with the, <laughs> with the two um, boat launches being closed, where is everybody launching at? Okay, and one recommendation is not to list Clear Lake Shores as a <laughs> launch site. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. All right, any more public comments? Having none, uh, A number eight, new business consent agenda. Uh, item A is for check register 516 2019 to 529 2019. B, waterfront transfer B052A to Shaflant to San Miguel, and then C, investment report for the quarter ending 331 of 2019. I'll, ma I'll make a motion to accept consent agenda A, B, and C. I'll second. And Billy made a motion and Amanda second. Any discussion? Mm. Having none. All in favor? Aye. All right, it's unanimous. All right, number nine, council business discussion and possible action may be taken on the following. Item A is an ordinance 2019-01, an ordinance adopting amendment number three to the original budget of the city of the Clear Lake Shores, Texas for the fiscal year 2017 to 2018, adjusting amounts in the expenditure accounts of the general fund due to unforeseen situations containing findings, providing for severability and providing other details re related thereto. This, oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, this basically just trues up the budget for, for the previous year and makes it all what it should be for the budget amounts. I'll, I'll move, since we have had questions on this, so I'll move to accept ordinance 2019 I'll second. Amanda made a motion and Jan second. Can I just, my first question is, on attachment A, under original amended budget, are those numbers the same numbers that are in our accepted Clear Lake Shores annual budget? Are those supposed to be the same as what's in here? Yes. Okay, I found several discrepancies um, in the numbers. And Amanda, I think, he, um, I'm not sure how we want to do this or, if, if or how it affects this, I guess. For example, um, on page one, under item 119511, interest expense, there wasn't any amount listed under original amended budget. However, in our budget, $22,180 was listed as the amount budgeted. So just to give you an example of, of the discrepancies, I found uh, a few of those. So I'm not sure how that affects us or, or what we need to do, but. Well, I believe since it's a true up, we need to go back to, and have <coughs> to Cheryl and have that corrected. Yeah. Because I didn't look at all of them. I just looked at the, the issues that I had, and then I went back to double-check it with the budget. And on probably half of the issues that I had, I saw 
that that doesn't shore up. So maybe we need to go over all of them, I guess, with Cheryl, just to make sure. Yeah, I recommend we can table come back with uh, her taking those notes. Did you have additional, Amanda, or is no, that I your? No, I spot checked. I didn't bring my my notes in my agenda, or my budget book, and I don't, I didn't bring that with me. But okay. I saw kind of the same thing. You saw the same thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was my question because the original one was budget, and then the, so yeah, it was just the two things, but they didn't match up. Okay. So I can amend my motion to report them to the next meeting. I'll second. All right, an amendment to the uh, first motion to postpone it to the next meeting by Amanda, second by Jan. Any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Mark, did you? I didn't get a copy. Oh, you didn't? Okay. Unanimous, or not unanimous, uh, four and one abstain. Next is uh, item B, presentation of the audited financial statements for fiscal year ended September 3rd, 
So we need to postpone this one too. All right, item C, we just removed. Give that one to Nancy. No action on item C. Item D, it should be page 132 of your packet. Ordinance 2019-02, an ordinance of, of the City of Clear Lake Shores, Texas, amending Chapter 2, Administration Section 2-27. Standing and Special Committee Guidelines of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Clear Lake Shores, Texas, by adopting the modification of the five-member structure of the Roads and Drainage Committee. I'll start with that. And basically, uh, this just uh, originally stated, and I'm going off the top of my head, that it was the uh, president of the EDC and the mayor pro tem had to be on this committee, and um, we were somewhat needed to correct that and allow us to uh, appoint folks to that position. And uh, with that, the change is to go with the ED selected person member and then also a, a, a council member that would be appointed. I'll make a motion to change the ordinance. All right, Christy makes a motion. Uh, Amanda first. Hmm? Amanda second. Oh. All right, any uh, discussion? Yeah, this isn't about the Roads and Drainage Committee, but I noticed on Section B, Understanding Committees, you know what I'm going to talk about. Uh, um, I think we need to address this maybe at the next meeting or whatever meeting we're going to address this. It breaks down the Parks Committee and also the Pool Committee. Then when it goes later and explains what's required of the committee, five members are required for each of those committees. However, they've been combined to Parks and Pool mm -hmm. now and we have five members, well, four now because we lost one. But I just wanted to bring that up so that we could get that on an upcoming agenda to amend that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Agree. Yes. All the Brent. Ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> all the ordinance. Yes. yes. Help What's out, your Brent. amendment, Christy? Uh, Yeah, we can discuss at the next meeting on this motion here. No, right now we're just discussing the roads and drainage, but I understand where you're coming from. Right, right. So again, I understand that's not a part of what we're discussing, but is there anything that, that we need to do as a council to make sure that we don't lose this in the, the paperwork? It's a motion. It's a motion is to approve the ordinance 2019-02. Yeah, the motion is just to approve what the change is right here. There was discussion about another ordinance that someone can bring up and submit a change form and we can bring it to the, next All right. Got that. Okay. to the next meeting. Of which all the you ordinances second. need to review. Second. Amanda second. So right. discussion. Any more further discussion? Nope. All right. All in favor? All right. It's unanimous. Motion passes.
All right, next is uh, with that change um, to appoint a member of the city council to the roads and drainage committee. And I was wanting to uh, recommend that Mark Thompson take that role. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amanda Fenwick uh, made a motion. Jan Bailey second. Any discussion? Mark? <laughs> <laughs> Will <All> you <laughs> accept? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to bless Don't you. Don't on the next meeting. <laughs> All in favor? All right. Mark, you voted for it, right? <laughs> right, you did, right? <laughs> Too bad, so ah, bad. Go democracy. Ah. You're down. <laughs> All right, item F, appoint a member of the city council to the water compliance committee. And uh, so I was on that committee, and as mayor, I don't think it would probably be proper for me to remain on that committee. And gracefully, again, Mr. Mark Thompson has volunteered to throw his name in the hat, so. I make a motion to approve Mark. I second. Christy Lyons, second by Angie Terrell. Any discussion? Nope. Do it fast, do it fast, do it fast. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Mark, are you in favor? <laughs> All right, that motion passed. All right, item G, consider and approve the formation of a special committee to address the parking at the Shell Bottom Park boat ramp and report back to city council with recommendations. Uh, basically, just wanted to put a small committee or tiger team together. I know there's been some issues over the last few weeks or months with the closing of the um, other boat launches underneath 146, and parking's been a concern. We've put up some parking signs. They may or may not meet the ordinances. We also have or, uh, mm -hmm. signs that say only parking for vehicles with boat trailers attached and I haven't found anything in there so I'm confused. And so this puts together a team to figure out kind of like what we did with the mobile food units of what we should have for the city. So I would like to uh, recommend six people to that committee and those being uh, two citizens, two police officers, and two council members. So for the citizens, um, gracefully already submitted Mr. J. Fenwick and Mike Pons, and then Sergeant Pete Baylor and Office Officer Kayla Sawyer. So I need two council members and all that motion stuff. Who was the other PD? Uh, which one did you miss? Uh, Sailor and who? Baylor? Sawyer. Sawyer and Baylor. Sawyer and Baylor. Sawyer and Baylor. Back it down. Back it down. That's how you, is that how you got yourself out of here? Back it down. Back it down. Nice job. So I need two recommendations and a motion. I make a motion we consider th the. I make a motion we form a special committee to address the parking at Shell Bottom boat ramp. With what two councilmembers? Does it mean that chairs have to be council? Does it? Yes. Because we did yeah, it for the mobile we'll food unit, same way. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. You guys are looking for us. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Christy and Angie? Well, who's second first? I'll second it. Okay, Christy. And then who's the names? Christy and Angie. Christy and Angie. Will you accept? All right, any discussion? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. That was video. All right. She's kind of weird. All right. All right. <laughs> Excellent. No discussion. All in favor? Unanimous. This is working out well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to item H. Review and approve debris removal contract. Mr. Brent Spear.
I'll second that. I have a question. Um, how long is, will this contract be for? Uh, I think it's three years. Typically. And our debris monitor is a three-year contract as well. And we're debris in monitor, uh, five-year contract. Five years. And I believe we're in year two. two. Okay. Correct. Okay. And that is three more. Seven more. And they did Harvey. They did Harvey. Yes. Harvey okay. Also did Harvey. No, I. Did they I do I? They did. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, we have a motion from Amanda and a second from Jan Bailey. Any other discussion? No. All right, having none, all in favor? All right, unanimous. Thanks, Brent. Thank you, Brent. All right, item I, approved bid for Clear Lake Road public parking lot. Brent again. Oh. Sorry, I have to the hour.
Makes a motion to approve Teamworks. I'll second. Angie, Carol, second. And this is um, paid for by the EDC? Yes. yes. No remediation whatsoever on the. There's no remediation. You, you said there's like something down there, we filled them with sand, it's done. So there's not. We didn't fill them with sand. There's nothing there. We've we've yes. have we we've tested not, the soil? We've have not we tested it and it's not a requirement. It's on a level one assessment, which basically says it recognizes the level of the protection of it, the not testing of it. It is filled with sand, which is reasonable remediation for that. Maybe it's clay if you want to get close to water and have it splash in there. And it also has a concrete cap. We're just making it a parking lot. We're making it a parking lot. Okay. And the only land disturbance will be around the periphery or uh, small, like gravel all edges and curbs and things like that. So it's just the uh, loose surface of the land. They had a pond on top of it. You know, the way I understand okay. it is if you were to build on it, you would have to remove, yeah. remediate the Absolutely. tank. But the tank is, I, is the remediated thing. from a standpoint it's filled with sand or dirt. All right, so we had a motion by Amanda and then a second by Angie. Any <laughs> further discussion? Having none, all in favor? Unanimous. Next is uh, item J, changed in fee structure for building permit fees. Brent, you're going on a roll here. <laughs>
Based on that short footage, that would be a valid expert to support the expert in evidence that came in. So it wouldn't have to be an expert to support it. Wouldn't have to be. So what we're asking for is that that equipment be able to be included in the chief's record in addition to any of the, or excuse me, rather than just the production permit and the things of that regard. Two dollars a square foot. And that hopefully the county would do a dollar a square foot. And then with any other construction that they suggested and any demolition, you'd have to factor that as well because the chief said he had to have that amount for his permit. A dollar a square foot. Does that amount to a church in that area that they want to have there? All right, so that's to recommend and approve the following changes of fee structure under building permit fees, residential construction permit new single family to two dollars, residential construction plan review single family to a dollar per square foot, other construction and demo to a dollar a square foot, and plan check fee to 50% of permit fee. And we're not doing anything on the commercial construction permit, permit over 100,000 feet or plan review. Correct, and perhaps there were maybe three additional things on it. Permit fee under 100,000 square feet, permit over 100,000 square feet, and then the construction plan review permit that they suggested. Correct. Okay. All right, any further discussion? We need a first and a second. Item J. I make a motion we approve the change in fee structure for building permit fees. Item J. All right. I'll second it. Motion by Andy, second by Christine. And well, do I need to amend that since we're striking those three commercial construction permits and they are in the packet here? Do we need to amend? Yes. Okay. All right, I make a motion that we accept the change in fee structure for building permit fees, item J, with the three lines striked, commercial construction permit up to 100,000, commercial construction permit over 100,000, and commercial construction plan review 50% stricken from the amendment. And again, I'll second it. All right, Ms. Lyons, second. Any other further discussion? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Good. Quickly. All in favor? All right, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin and Brent. All right, next item K, approved purchase of two Trek police e-bicycles. Chief Kenny Cook. The Clear Lake Shores Police Department's bicycle division was formed back in 2012 with five Cannondale police bicycles being purchased and outfitted by only using money that was donated to the police department. Unfortunately, four of those police bicycles were destroyed during Storm Harvey in 2018. FEMA has paid the city of Clear Lake Shores to replace those destroyed bicycles. I've been advised we have a balance of $6,665.10 from FEMA that we can use to replace those bicycles. I want to replace those four manual pedal bikes with two electric assisted pedal bikes. Due to staffing, scheduling, and storage, I think we only need to replace two of those four bicycles. Police department bicycle divisions across the country are changing over to electric pedal assisted e-bikes because officers can ride and patrol longer, have a faster response to calls, with less fatigue when arriving on scene. That equals a safer, efficient, and more successful police bicycle patrol division. Council, I provided you with extra information, stuff that I found online about the electric police bikes. I've chosen to purchase the Trek police bike. Trek Land is well known, has a great reputation of providing a reliable product. Bike Barn is a bicycle store that's closely located in our area. They've quoted this CLSPD two Trek police e-bikes for the price of $1,000. 
price of $3,500 a piece. These bicycles normally cost $4,000 a piece. Bike Barn can also repair, service, and obtain any parts for these Trek Fleet Sea Bikes for their needs. All other types and models of Fleet Sea Bikes that are offered must be ordered online, and they may have to be shipped out for any repairs at the local bike shop. Trek Police e-bikes come with a two-year warranty on their electronic components, which is a battery and motor, lifetime warranty on frame, and a year warranty on the other bike parts, like wheels, shifts, and shaders. So extended warranty is not available for any police e-bike bikes. I am respectfully asking for council's approval to approve purchase two Trek Police e-bikes for the quoted price of $7,000 using money FEMA has paid to the city, and then I'll pay all the remaining balance owed using money that's been donated to the police department. In addition, I'll use donated money to outfit both police sea bike boat patrol duties, supply our officers with new helmets, and purchase a two-year ultimate care plan covering the recommended annual maintenance cost. That plan costs $162 per bike. Currently, I have a balance of $9,813.67 from CLSC Special Equipment Account that's funded by the gracious donations made to the Philadelphia Police Department. Council, I think you should be excellent stewards of your police department. Uh, I, I spoke with a couple of the officers I know would be riding them, and they're excited that they can use the bike. And, uh, so, uh, I will motion to approve the purchase of two <coughs> Trek Police e bikes. I'll second that motion. So, Chief, I have a question in here. It says that um, you use donated money to outfit both police e bikes for patrol duties. What does that in what does that entail? The patrol bikes they don't have a whole lot of money. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of little red and blue lights. Chief, I want to ask, you've already gotten money from FEMA for these bikes, correct? The city got money. Right. That's, that's, that's correct. Money. So it's not like we are out any money for these bikes. No. We're replacing them. Well, that's it doesn't right. cover the full price. Right. Well, 60 something or another. The difference And I have a question, Brent. I just want to confirm this FEMA money that we have that we have received as a city, six thousand six hundred sixty-five dollars and ten cents. We have that FEMA money, and this is earmarked for this. Everything's okay for us to spend this money. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And uh, my uh, one thing problem is that uh, the one thing uh, I had a question from him and he said that the lifetime warranty on the frame uh, would that include any conversion? <laughs> no. uh, that was my question too. No. Will you move these high and dry? Yeah. Where are we storing oh. them? <laughs> I hope we never get go up a staircase. <laughs> <laughs> library did too. I mean, no, no, that this type of water out here is destroyed. It is. It would not touch that. And where will we store them? Not, not in a catastrophic event, but like on a Tuesday. Where are they going to be? <laughs> Normally, they okay. will always be in the garage. That's underneath the police department storage. Is that enough protection for an electronic bike? Is that, or do we need something else for them, or is that okay for them? Uh, are they like locked up down there, or are they it's just locked up in the garage? They're, they're locked up. Actually. Yeah, it's ventilated down there. Okay, so they're fine. Is there a camera down there? 
Pardon me? Yeah. Is there yeah. a camera down there? There's several cameras. Mm -hmm. We've got cameras around the building. We can see who's in the garage door. I, I'm just double checking. <laughs> Are you going to take them? <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask. Take right Christy. off on one, Christy. <laughs> right on that door. Seriously? All right. <laughs> And they'll also be able to come go through some of the events and stuff, like at Jarbo and yeah, stuff that's further back. As we can. Right. And Chief, you need council's approval to spend that donated money, is that right? Well, I have another question. Wait. So an individual donated $10,000, is that correct? That is correct. So I would think that the police department would be able to spend that any way they would want to. That was his idea. When he donated that well, money, he said, yeah. I want to make Let's sure the police department provides I mean, that's just my idea. I just... Right, but it comes into the general fund, so... Yeah. All right, but... The funds go into the general fund. the initial liability? I mean, what's the additional, like, what? Well, I think, I think there's a, there's even bigger liability where we cut a light and you combine it so that the tires squeak and, and uh, I'm, I'm in with it and I'm, 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 if I go out and mow grass all day, I don't want to come in and uh, spend 15 minutes talking about what we're going for dinner and I want to get down and respond. I think it's a little, a little less than, than normal. So, So you're saying that the motorized vehicle helps less yeah, than less than that. I think it helps them do their job particularly in the evening too. Um, and it makes it hot and sweaty when we're not spending less than we're riding bikes and things like that. So uh, having some telling over the road now. And to iterate that's that's different than going from a police vehicle going to a standard bike. Correct. And riding around and getting fatigued. The other thing is I don't Actually, that was my question, and I'll, I'll preface this by saying I love this, and I think it's great, but, you know, we live in Clear Lake Shores, so there's those naysayers. 
so, so when they naysay to us and say, well, why are we putting our officers on bikes and not just leaving them in their vehicles? What are we doing that for? I mean, what do I tell them? Make sure you tell them that we our priority is in the police vehicle, going, going in for calls. We have extra uh, personnel that we can pull off the street, still maintain the passing lane we have. So we um, understand that opportunity. So we expect to see these bikes out there all the time because we're not safe. So commu more community involvement, more involvement, um, so engaging, far, engaging the community. Yeah. Okay. So if okay. they're on the bikes, are they seen just yeah. on the island, or yeah. they're going to go like? They can go out there to the car park. Like, like, like we do on the golf court. I mean the golf course. Yeah. Okay. 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 And you said our guys and girls are really, they're excited? They're excited. You know, okay. our, our folks are used to it. I'm fairly used to it. They love riding the bike. They know that they're going to be on the bike. So will they be participating in the bike parade for July 4th? Thank you for looking into the, the research that I got very educated on, on motorized yeah, bikes. Fine. Thank you for all that. Yeah. All right, so I had a, a motion and a second, so any other further discussion having none, nobody wants to amend anything, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, item L, ordinance to amend Code of Ordinances, Chapter 2, Administration, Article 2, City Council, Section 2-21, time and place of meetings. Councilwoman Amanda Pennell. So in doing um, some research about a month ago, I came across um, section 2-21 of our uh, ordinances. Um, item C is the order of business for regular meetings and it um, is not anywhere near what our current mm -hmm. order of business is. And so we need to either amend the, or the, the code to reflect how we currently conduct our business or we need to amend how we currently conduct our business to reflect what's currently in the code. Um, my recommendation is we amend the code to reflect how we're currently doing business. Um, so for example, item three um, on in our code of ordinances says that city council announcements are only the second meeting of every month. Well, we do city council announcements every month. Um, the last item under um, business is consent agenda. Well, we have consent agenda before we do our regular normal business. So my recommendation here is that we amend the code to reflect how we are currently conducting our order of business. And that would be my motion. I second. Yeah. All right. Amanda made a motion and Andy second. So my question is, it doesn't say the first and third of the month? Or so city council announcement, second meeting of month. We okay. do them every month. Right. Right. So and then, like, just as an example. And first we have and third week. And right. And then we have scheduled and unscheduled visitors in the code. Well, we just have public comment on our agenda. 
Right. Um, so it's the order is out of order, and what we call things doesn't mesh. And so mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yep. And the only other thing I had was just asked us about the time of the meeting. Just throwing that out there. Did we want to make it any earlier, like 6:30 instead of 7? Do you want just to? for consideration? I'm willing to do it, I'm but I would that. like all of council's agreement on yep. that. I'm down with that. So we have to amend your motion. So to amend to uh, amend the time to 6:30 p.m. and then am amend um, section C of section item C of section 221 to reflect how we're currently conducting. Right. I second. And Amanda, how nuts and bolts then do we go about doing that? Do we? Um, to we get our agenda and then use that to rewrite section C mm -hmm. one through however mm -hmm. just based on and who does that? Christy. 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 Okay. Say first and third. Secretary Christy, not me. First <laughs> and third at six thirty. I mean, how will we how will we make it? Like first and third, six thirty? Well, that's already in in that's up top. section one. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, section C that we're amending is strictly based off of our agenda, and so section one, um, we're just amending the time from seven to six thirty. And I have a question um, for you guys. How do we? How did we get to public comments instead of scheduled or unscheduled visitors? How did how did we move to that? Our in previous in mayor made that decision. Yeah, is there a reason for that or? With the TML. With the TML, TML okay. Okay. So the nomenclature needs to match up with them as much as possible, but their order is just a little bit. But you can you can make your create your own order just as long as it matches or has everything in it. And Mr. Spear wants to say something. Well, I want to see if you can change this, and then maybe you have a motion second. Just to be Correct. Yeah, I would do it how we're currently time. doing it. In the committee reports, we move to the second meeting. So I believe the, the motions to match what we're currently doing today. Correct. Right. To match what we're currently doing. Correct. Great find, Amanda. That's an excellent find, Amanda. So we're Thank do you. 630? Yes. That's what. Everybody that's the okay motion that's on the table. That's the motion that's on the table. All right, motion and second. All in, are there any more discussion? All in favor? 